by Anthony Sutton. Look on the internet, it's there, and it's cheap. You know, I interviewed uh, Lyndon Johnson's uh, lawyer. He says he had uh, played a role in the assassination of Kennedy. He, uh, uh, the first, his first act after becoming the president was to recall all of the money that Kennedy issued with 11-11-0. I still carry, I've got a $5 bill in my pocket that's worth $10,000 right now. Getting a little worn, getting a little threadbare because I show it to a lot of people to let them see what a United States note looked like. And, and they've, uh, Johnson Johnson was behind that. Now, uh, as far as Barack Obama, you know, my career now has pretty much spanned pissing off four presidents, Robert. And uh, Barack, I think he's perfect. I think he's absolutely perfect as the new world order leader. He's black. He's white. He's he's Muslim. He's Jewish. He's Christian. And and and, and he's he's an illegal alien, <laughs> practically. Yep. Yep. But he's the good boy. You can punch a button anywhere on him, and he'll do the bidding. And he'll change it from day to day, whatever he told. He knows the game. He's not stupid. He knows the game. Because he's a Harvard grad, supposedly. We don't know for sure. And uh, he's a Marxist, we do know for sure. And he's a Muslim, we don't know for sure, but hey, the record speaks for itself. Well, he it says he is. is, he tells us he is, he, uh, he, he, talks, about, he talks about listening oh, to yeah. the prayer chants, I mean, he brags about it, his wife brags about it, he's a Muslim. Yeah. And, and yeah. that's okay, actually, Robert, that's okay, because the, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, allows you to worship any way you please. So if you want to beat your head against that wailing wall or you want to stick your nose down in the dirt and your ass up in the sound, you know, up in the air, I'll, I'll, I'll try to keep the St. Bernard off of you, but don't expect me to get well, down on my the, knees the, with the, you. The, 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 listen, though, hey, listen, the Constitution, well, that's a questionable thing you just said. When the Constitution was written, James Madison had a big hand in it. George Marshall, who was Washington's first... Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, appointed by George Washington, interpreted the, that 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 phrase in the Constitution, freedom of religion, and what? he said it was freedom at that time in our history. <laughs> Hang on here a second. Hold on. Damn! What's all this? Uh, I don't know. Uh, somebody, somebody here. Some some asshole in one of these other chat rooms got in here. So. Uh, oh. I'll okay. take care. Of, I'll take said, care of that. I'll take care of that. And what uh, Marshall said when they wrote the Constitution, when they wrote those sections, he said that the freedom of religion was freedom. Now get this: freedom for Christians. Specific word. I'm saying he said it, not me. For Christians to worship in the way that they chose, without interference from other faiths. So that means you could be a Catholic. You could be interpretation wise, you could be a Baptist, you could be a Methodist, and you can't stop me from being what I want to be. But that didn't include Muslims, it didn't include anything but Christians, is what the Constitution was written by and for. So that, that is a loose term now. They're saying, oh yeah, it guarantees freedom of religion. It guarantees that these Muslims can blockade a street in Washington, D.C. once a week and lay their prayer clause down and block all traffic and have their prayer time. No, it does not protect them from that. The Constitution has been so warped. How can you say that illegal immigrants coming into America, illegal is breaking a law, how can you say, not you, but how can our, our, our politicians tell us they're protected by the Constitution? No! That's a document written for Americans, not for illegal immigrants, not for crooks. No! So, I mean, you go back to the original origin of the Constitution, and Hey, Christians can religion, worship in any way they choose, period. That's what the man who wrote it said. That's what they should have written. They should have clarified it. But, but you know, a lot of things in the Constitution were told today in our classes, in our schools, in our grammar schools, great, uh, uh, high schools, colleges, that the Constitution is a living document. Hey, beware, a living document. It can be changed and added or, or, or suggested 
to, to mean whatever you mean today. It, it, it's a living document. It's to change with the times. That is not so. The Constitution is simply a list of laws, of rules, written for moral people to run the moral nation. Period. And that's what Madison said. He said it was a document written for a moral population, a moral people. If we lose that morality, we will lose the country. Well, look where we're at. So, I mean, you, you, people can go back and they say, oh, that was a couple hundred years ago. Yes, it was. But those men had the foresight to write a code of laws to live by, and if you stayed within those laws, a constitution as a nation, example, it specifically states in there what the federal government can do, duties. There's only a few, very few. Then it says anything not mentioned here reverts to the states, which is states' rights, as we call it now. The government has infringed on every every aspect of our life in federal and state government, period. And how they've done a lot of this is they've given money, highway construction, schools, everything, grants, such. And when the chips are down, when the state comes up and doesn't agree with them, they'll say, hey, we're cutting off your highway funds. Well, everybody runs in this scary in the state legislature. Oh, my God, we can't have this. We need the highway. We've got to have the funds. So they go along with the feds. They can change the way of our life by simply withdrawing what they've given us. And they have never given us anything. It's always with a payment. Always with a price. You know, people talk a lot about the uh, revolution. There being a revolution here. I, I, I'm kind of of the opinion we've already done that. We did that a long time ago. And, and uh, you know, our founding fathers, uh, I mean, they told us, they, they were so good, Robert. I mean, Thomas Jefferson said, if you ever allow a private bank to issue your money, the banks and the corporations that spring up around them will leave your children homeless in the land that we conquered. That's exactly what happened. George Bush walking out the door, out that revolving communist door, he handed $2 trillion to the bankers, and if he had given that money to the American people, we could have paid off every mortgage in America. We would live, be living in our homes free and clear. We wouldn't have to pay taxes to rent our homes from the government. Well, look at the freedom a government official has to make these type of money. Here we are, trillions of dollars in debt, can't even catch up, and here we turn around and one department of our government loans so many billion dollars to a Russian car manufacturer. What the heck is going on? It, is it that topsy-turvy? Yes. How dare they use the taxpayers' money? The government doesn't have any money. It's taxpayers' money. The government doesn't make money. Everything the government's been involved with, the Postal Service, any type service, they have totally flubbed and gone into billions of dollars in debt. They simply are lousy managers. And they put in, 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 inappropriate people in the positions to manage these jobs, and the people aren't qualified. And if they are, they don't care. They're sitting back drinking coffee and shooting the breeze, having a good time. Uh, I, I, it's just incredible. We would give money or loan money, whatever, in the financial shape we are said to be in as a nation, where somebody in our government got away with loaning money to the Soviets to a Russian government. Sure. Well, let what me. About let, guns, what about the guns that went down to uh, uh, our attorney general, who's probably the biggest liar and thief, one of the top representatives in government as a liar? I mean, here he is, Holder. Uh, he can't even honestly answer the questions when he's being grilled by Congress. Of course, Congress, uh, you know, I, I would rather they keep the hell out of Congress and keep. Uh, I wish Congress would close up for about three months. There's a few things. Day. There's a few things I, I I tell people I can't tell you. You know I can't tell you whether the uh, government took over the mafia or the mafia took over the government. I can't tell you whether the uh, press controls the government or if the government controls the press. I can't tell you if we own Israel or if Israel owns us. And and I think I might be wrong on both counts because I think we're owned by the city of London and the Vatican and Washington DC these tri cities control all of our money they set the price on the gold they raise a little flag there in the city of London to decide what the price of gold is going to be that day and and that's exactly what was done to us by Roosevelt he took our gold from us demanded that we take we turn in our gold 
to the banks and then doubled the value of gold. Right, right. And, and, and this is that two trillion dollars that George Bush gave the banks to bail out the banks. He gave it to the, money, the people that printed the money and loaned it to Bush to give to them. Mm-hmm. Is that mm-hmm. insane? I mean, to me, that's that's insanity, and, and it's even we're even more insane by sitting here and watching this happen on TV, and going, gee, gee, you know, I mean, does it, doesn't it occur to anybody else that if you take two trillion dollars and give it to the American people and they give it back to the banks, we pay the banks off, they can take a vacation, a permanent one, and and then we. Uh, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to hurt nobody. I don't want to shoot nobody. I'd like to hang a few people, but only after a fair trial. And Let when me I mention something to you as an example, we yes, were sir. talking about uh, the McCarthy Chronicles. Yes. Part one: treason. There was a question in there about who uh, who sponsored or gave communists China. Let them take airborne training at Fort Benning, Georgia. This is important. Why would this happen? And who did it? Now, Reagan, when he ran for office during this, or not ran for office, I'm sorry, during the 64 presidential campaign of Senator Barry Goldwater, he said this, direct quote, We are at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind. Here's your answer. Then why did Ronald Reagan, this president, sponsor the sale, sponsor the sale of a $98 million ammunition plant to communist-occupied China? And then what was his thinking behind letting red Chinese soldiers take airborne training at Fort Benning? Did he have a change of mind on the way to becoming president of the United States? It's just absolutely incredible that this happened. Well, I mean, we talk about a president... I know, I know that everybody uh, in the conservative movement loves Ronald Reagan, but I, know. I also know the people that worked in his campaign, and they were simply stunned when he came out and announced George Bush, CIA director George Bush, the one man responsible for Operation Watchtower, was going to be his vice president. Oh, I know. It. And that al- that almost got him killed, you know. That almost got him killed because uh, Hinckley was a, a friend of the Bushes. Isn't that isn't that just incredible? It, it, it really incredible that this man who ran talking about hey the most dangerous enemy yet we sponsored them with a ammunition plant ninety eight billion dollars million dollars and we also let them take airborne training he still they were still the most dangerous enemy that ever faced mankind so the, the the thing comes up then who influenced Ronald Reagan? Because if you got to, you got to remember too that Ronald Reagan. One of the biggest disappointments I had was when he signed the bill making uh, uh, Martin Luther King Day. And if you see the record of Martin Luther King, it's not too hot. And in fact, one instance I will mention without going into a lot of detail, people can check this out. J. Edgar Hoover, who, by the way, there's a new book out on J. Edgar, and I haven't read it yet, but it sounds like advertising it on TV. The media's playing it up, so I guess it's a smear. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover, during the Vietnam War, Martin Luther King said, I am going over to Hanoi and negotiate with the communists. I will do what I can to end this war. And, of course, this was this was a, a traitorous activity. It was a law for private citizens to do this. And J. Edgar Hoover said, look, Martin Luther King, if you go, then I will have to expose the tapes that we have on you from the motels where you were with the women you beat it. you you know, beat up and all this type of thing. He had a thing for uh, prostitutes, I guess. And wherever he went, he'd beat the hell out of them. Well, Andrew Hoover threatened to expose him for this, and King backed off. He did not go. This is one of the things why I hate Hoover so much is because he did take action against people like this. So what do you say? I mean, yet, yet, Ronald Reagan signed a bill making this Martin Luther King Day. We still celebrate it today. How many votes did it get him? A whole lot, I guess. When the so when the federal re- when the Federal Reserve took over in 1913, we became a communist country. 
They just yeah. don't, you know, they, 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 I, I've been called, I've had some people call me a communist. I've had also been called a right-wing radical, a, an extremist, an anti-Semite, a racist, everything else in the book. Well, will be because you're taking a stand on Anybody that stands out is going to be criticized telling the truth. The, uh, I say we're we're in a war, and and we've been in a war for quite some time. And you've been in a war since before Roosevelt. Before Roosevelt, we've been in a war. Yes, but people don't know that. Look at Korea. We fought a war, and we lost a war. They said, "Oh no, it wasn't a war. It was a police action." Who said that, Harry Truman? Because it was not a war declared by Congress. So we we had 150,000 men killed or wounded over there. We had something like over 5,000, perhaps a lot more than that, prisoners of war who were left behind deliberately by their own government. Young boys, 17, 18 years old, flag waving, fight for America, save America from communism. All right, hang on. Hang on just a second. War was over. Hello. We declared expendable. And left behind. Expendable. I'm in the middle of the show. I'll call you back. For foreign policy. So we can open trade agreements with the Koreans. Did the same thing in Vietnam. We actually won the Vietnam War. Documentation proves this. <coughs> the numbers of deaths and so on over there compared to our troops versus theirs. In, in, it's just incredible. And, um, but the media lost the war for us. Because they said in, 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 remember in Vietnam, they said, hey, we cannot defeat America on the battlefield, but we will defeat you on, in the streets of New York. Well, did the media play up that? Yes. Did Jane Fonda have good press? Yeah. Hell yeah, she had great press. But to this day, she's never been put in prison for being a traitor, committing treason, which she did, and her husband did, and the people who went over there with her. Hey, what about what about our last presidential candidate, Songbird McCain? <laughs> who? <laughs> who? Sorry. <laughs> Get cut off. Songbird McCain. Oh, God, tell me, tell me, tell me. I got a whole chapter on him on my book. In a, a book I have called Unwanted, Dead or Alive. The, 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 the subtitle is The Greatest Act of Treason in American History, The Betrayal of American POWs. After World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, all three wars. People need to read that, and where can they get it? Well, through you, I suppose, or right. in simplest ways, just get on Amazon and, and look for it. Hold on just a moment. Right. Hold on just a moment here. Hold on. I want the dinner line. All right. Hold on just a minute. Hello. Who is this? Okay, dear. I'm in the middle of a radio show. Can you call me back in ten minutes? Thank you, my dear. I appreciate it. Look forward to talking to you. Give me ten minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't get many I don't get many phone calls. You know, Robert, you've known me for some time. You know, I, I was doing quite well with my magazines. I had all of the books ready to go when my accident happened. I don't believe it was an accident. I don't believe that you need to keep somebody drugged into oblivion for three months in three hospitals for three broken ribs. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and what they've done is they had to kill me financially. They've queered million dollar deals. I've had companies worth a million bucks, folks, many times. And and they have killed every one of those deals working behind the scenes. Who has the ability to tap my phones to know where I'm at, to know who I'm talking to, and and to contact to contact 200 stockholders to tell, tell them what uh, how anti-Semitic I am. And well, you know, consider yourself lucky, Clay. You're still alive. James Forrestal didn't make it. And neither did Bill Cooper. He, he just, Bill Cooper and I, <laughs> Bill Cooper and I, on the same phone that they tapped three years later, my eight one seven uh, uh, AT and T phone. Bill Cooper and I had talked about putting our magazines together, Veritas, and putting our radio shows together, and going after these bastards. And they killed him, and then they tried to kill me. 
this is the kind of, of game that's being played here. And and I can't well, remember remember James remember James Forrestal's type of diary. Yes. Right, and it would have exposed all of the stuff we're talking about in government. It would have exposed the names, the places, the times. He recorded all of this. He was there. He was a person who was knowing these people. He wrote a diary. Okay, Truman had him put in a mental institution, the Naval uh, Hospital in Bethesda, Maryland, and uh, uh, for observation. They put his diaries in the White House safe. Uh, where are they still there? I mean, nobody knows. Were they taken out and destroyed? Probably. But the fact is, they were taken forcibly from him. Now, he happened to be up in a high story in that hospital, and he jumped out the window. Well, isn't it funny? When they found his body, he had a cord tied around his bathrobe, cord tied around his neck, been strangled. So did he jump? No. They said, oh, he committed suicide. No. He had a bath cord. Somebody was up there, strangled the son of a gun, and threw him the hell out. Yes. And the media played it up as suicide. But, hey, you can come right up to present day, and then the Clinton administration, the same way the people that were killed during the Clinton administration, the guy that was walking in the park had a five shots in his head or something like that, he committed suicide with a pistol? Come on. I mean, this is a, I don't even remember the guy's name. Now. Vince Foster. <laughs> You're talking about Vince Foster. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many bullets he had in him. But yeah, well, that's, uh, that's your uh, Secretary of State's lover there. Yeah, right, right, right. But hey, why get rid of him? Well, some reason they had to, and they had, and they said it was a suicide press. Well, hey, everybody knew he had more bullets in him than could be possible for a suicide. One shot in the head would have done it, and he had a pistol. And they, they, they somehow or other got to the guy who did the, uh, the fellow that does the autopsies, and the guy said, yeah, he had, it was suicide. Ruled a suicide officially, and then they closed the case. Did the media question it? No. Why? Because they were on the same team. Right? You, you can't trust the media. Robert, I mean, how can people how can people get your books? So you you uh, and, and just remind me. It's been a few years. Remind you you were talking uh, writing about the whole patriot movement, everything that was going on twenty years ago. Oh yeah. yeah I yeah. I remember handling your books. I distributed your books. If I could yeah. ever get back up on top and get back, uh, get my head above water again, I'd love to handle them again. I, matter of fact, if you send me a link and send me uh, all the data on it, I'll put them on the, on the website because you've been telling the truth. I mean, I'm telling the people the truth. You can get an education. Timothy Bible College is using my, my book, Mystery Babylon, The New World Order Unveiled, this oh, is, in, 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 uh, in their classes. I'm actually an instructor at uh, Timothy Bible College. It's an online college. Oh, wow. Well, my, my history books on George Washington and the Founding Fathers that I've written are uh, are being starting being used by homeschool, homeschoolers now. So that's a pickup site. It's a new market for me. It's a brand new thing, but I've got homeschoolers using them, and they love them, and they've reviewed them. A place called Old School House Magazine has reviewed my books, and they think they're absolutely unbelievably good. And my friend, the, the the dean of Timothy Bible College, is a man that started the Little Red Schoolhouse. I'll be darned. Well, listen, Dr. I have a uh, book, a new book called George Washington's Prayers. I've never seen it on the internet. I've never seen it anywhere. But I come across all this stuff when I'm doing research writing. I got a book called George Washington, Man of God, chosen by God. Okay, I got another one called George Washington, Man of Destiny. Shows his background from childhood on up with his parents and so on, and why he would be the one man in our country at that time in history who would be chosen. Who would be? He was such a devout Christian man. <coughs> okay, those are all on Amazon. They're available, but the homeschool people love these books, and they're using them to teach the kids the truth about American history. I'm, I'm linked to That's Amazon, funny. too. Now, we're out of time, and folks, you can get, if you go to freeamerican.com, I've got links to uh, Barnes and Noble, to the uh, to uh, the, the book on McCarthy, treason. Oh yeah, there's two books on McCarthy: traitors and treason. Ooh. Okay. The McCarthy Chronicles. All of this, uh, the the link is up on on the site right now. And Robert, if you'll send me the list of your other books, I, I my books are available on Amazon.com. I'll let people know about that and don't know how they can get it. All right. You really need to get educated. Uh, and you've been do, you've been doing this for longer than me, I almost I think. 
Well, I, I, I'm, I'm really a thorough believer, you know, I'm a thorough believer, and you have to know your past in order to respect it, you know. You love America if you know where it came from. Well, how about how about America's foods? Do you still have your Civil War and Revolutionary War cookbooks? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've still written, I've written more of those. Oh yeah. well, yeah. I, I'd love to. Uh, I would like to feature all of that. On I'll give you a, I'll give you a whole page here, or, or a whole uh, spot on my website. People need to know about that. My 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 solutions to this whole thing is the concept of Liberty Villages. Grow your own food. That way you don't have to worry about the genetically modified crap that rats won't eat, but they feed it to well, you. But remember, when you grow your own food, to not get the genetically modified seeds. That's right. Because they only plant for one season. You cannot reproduce the next year. That's right, and you that's why it is in your backyard. You need the non-altered seeds. Yes. That's something you may stress too, you know, because people would go out and buy the seeds and think they get, hey, I got burpee seeds, I got a whole can for ten bucks. Wow. Well, sure, you plant them, they're going to grow the good stuff, but next year you got nothing. You're going to starve. Well, and I do folks, believe the, uh, that is part of the overall program. It is. It is. So they starve. They starve ten million people in the Ukraine. They could do it in Kansas just as easy. Exactly right, and the way to do it without being offensive to people and not having them catch on is to modify the seeds. That's right, and that's what they have done. They have and done this, but that, the other seeds are still available. That's you done by them. that's done by Monsanto. No food that we don't own, Monsanto. Thank you for your right. show. Well, Clyde, listen, I appreciate everything you did, everything you do, everything you do to before, helping me with books and stuff. But everything I have is on Amazon right now. All right, sir. And, they, and I, I mean, I think it's great because people do buy through Amazon. Yep. And they, they might as well buy through you. Send send me send me the information. I'll put it. I'll hook up with Amazon. I think I got an account with them. Oh, good. Okay, I'll do that. I'll do that because I get a regular loyalty thing from Amazon. Also, I'm putting them all all my books now. Not the cookbooks yet, all of them, but some are on uh, eBooks with Amazon. The, the uh, Amazon, what do you call it? The uh, readers. Kindle. Kindle, yeah. They're on Kindle. That's the ebook reader. And then they're also on Barnes and Noble, what they call the e nook. But it's also the, the reader. So I've got them with both of those publishers. They're the biggest ones in the world. All right, but sir. They're on ebook. So that's Thank you. Might, you know, let people know. I'll talk to you later. All right, shoot me an I email. Shoot me an email over on that, and I'll add it here. All right. Good deal. All right. See, See you later. Thank you. Thanks. God bless you. Thanks, guys. FreeAmerican.com. All the information will be there. All right, folks. Let's see. FreeAmerican.com. That's where I'm at. Thanks. And that guest was 